Cooler Master recently did a refresh of one of their most popular air coolers, the Hyper 212, called the Hyper 212 Halo Black. It's got RGB, it has a sleek new design, and it's got a slightly different mounting system to the older Hyper 212s, making this thing much easier to install than ever. Before we begin, I just want to make this super clear that this is for demonstration purposes only because every system, motherboard and setup is different. And this guide is just to give you the fundamental idea of how to install the new Hyper 212 on all types of motherboards. And I'm just going to answer some questions that we usually get in these videos. Yes, it's got RGB and you can install more than one fan, but it only comes with clips for a single fan in the box. And this thing will work with AuraSync and basically every other motherboard RGB that you can think about, as long as it's got three pin, five volt addressable RGB. Yeah, this is probably gonna work with every CPU and motherboard combo you're gonna ask about in the comments. And that's basically it. Let's jump in. Here it is, ladies and gents, the brand new Cooler Master Hyper 212 Halo Black. Let's do our usual thing. Let's take a look at what's in the box. There isn't much. They've actually cut back on what you need to install. First up, we've got all the mounting gear. So this is all the mounting gear for both Intel and AMD based installations. This is for LGA 11.5X, LGA 1700, AM4, AM5. Okay, there's also an included Cooler Master Halo fan. This is a PWM and addressable RGB fan. As for mounting gear, this is the AM4 and AM5 mounting gear. You use this mounting gear for both types of installations. We've got the Intel LGA mounting gear. This is for 11.5X all the way up to LGA 1700. We've got the back plate for all the Intel installations as well. We've got these clips. These clips hold the fan to the front side of the cooler. There's only a single set of these. There's also a tube of Cooler Master Master Gel Pro Thermal Compound, as well as the two screws to hold the mounting brackets to the cooler itself. And lastly, the cooler itself. It's got a brand new sleek blacked out design. It's got a new top on it as well. Uh, they've kind of removed the Cooler Master branding, which I mean, I can get behind. First things first, this is a common step for all installations. Please peel off label before you use it. Read that warning very carefully and peel that label off. This part of the guide applies to Intel installations. So that's all the way from Intel Socket 11.5X, LGA 1700 as well as LGA 1200 and basically anything in between and this is what we're going to need for insulation. The first you want to do is locate the Intel installation bracket. Now let's adjust the offset. Now Intel's LGA 1200 and 11.5x will be on the inside and LGA 1700 will be more towards the outside. You'll notice there is a notch on the outside edge of the bracket. That's to help us align it the correct way on the cooler. What you want to do is align the bracket with the cooler itself. And then you'll want to grab one of the two screws and you'll want to lower it in through the hole on the bottom side of the cooler and fasten the screw up so it's tight, but don't over tighten this just tight enough for the bracket to not be moving around. Once you've done one side of the cooler, rinse and repeat that process so you have both brackets installed here. And that's just about as easy as it is to do mounting gear with this cooler. And if you had a bit of luck, it should look a little something like this. Now we're gonna move on to the back plate. Now the back plate is adjustable as mentioned for both LGA 1700 and older LGA sockets. And you can slide it towards the outside for LGA 1700 or inside for the older sockets. To install the backplate, I'd recommend putting the backplate on a flat surface if the motherboard's out of your case and lowering the motherboard onto the backplate, aligning the holes correctly with the correct offset that we applied earlier. And that's it, backplate is installed. Now you'll want to get your Cooler Master Master Gel Pro. And we're going to apply some thermal paste. Now there's lots of different ways to do this. This is the way I would recommend for LGA 1700 because that's what we're using in this video. A nice stripe of thermal paste down the center of the IHS should be more than enough. Having too much thermal paste is okay, but too little can lead to some problems. But as I mentioned, I would recommend about this much. Now you want to lower the cooler and line it up with the holes 
on your motherboard so you can screw the cooler into the back plate. Now the way I'd recommend doing this is doing it in a diagonal pattern starting from the top left and going to the bottom right and so and so forth. The trick here is to not do it up too tight, just do it up enough to hold the cooler into place and once you've done that, fasten them in all the way until the screws stop. Don't try and over tighten them, just make sure they stop when they hit the back plate. Then we'll want to grab the fan and what we're going to do is install the clips on the fan, put the clips through the holes on the front side of the fan and you want to do that on two sides of the fan at least. If you do it one, it's going to fall off and you want to align that with the front side of the cooler and this can be tricky if you've never done this before but basically what you want to do is you want to stretch these metal clips out so in this orientation at least pull it towards you and clip it onto the heatsink and you want to do that on both sides of the cooler so it holds the fan in place and there you have it your fans mounted not too difficult you got this guys i believe in you locate this cable here this is the pwm fan connector both fan cables need to be plugged in this one here makes the fan spin you want to locate a header on your motherboard labeled something like cpu fan and you want to plug that into that header on your motherboard and it only plugs in one way so it's pretty difficult to mess that part up next you want to locate the three pin five volt addressable rgb connector and you want to then locate a three pin five volt addressable rgb header on your motherboard check your motherboard's manual for the correct header and you want to plug that cable in and we're done and that cable only plugs in one way so it is very difficult to plug that in the wrong way For AM4 and AM5 installation, these are the only parts that we need for the mounting hardware. This is a very simple installation and it's never been easier to do AM4 and AM5 installations. Grab this bracket here and we're going to install this onto the cooler itself and you'll notice that it has a notch on the edge. That helps us align the bracket with the cooler in the correct orientation. You want to put that underneath and kind of pull it up. You want to put that bracket underneath the cooler on this side and align it with those notches and you want to get one of the two included screws and then screw the bracket through the hole on the bottom side of the cooler so the bracket lines up and is in nice and good. You'll then want to repeat that process so you can install the bracket on the other side of the cooler because we do require two brackets to be installed here. Don't over tighten these, just tighten them up just enough. And with a bit of luck, it should look a little something like this. This has never been easier for the Hyper 212. Now we want to remove the stock mounting hardware for both AM4 and AM5 motherboards. This is the same for both AM4 and AM5 motherboards. The only difference being that with AM4, the backplate is not permanently attached to the motherboard, whereas with AM5, it is permanently attached. But everything that you're about to see does apply to both AM4 and AM5, just in case you had any questions on whether or not it will work with your CPU and motherboard combo. Next, grab the tube of the Master Gel Thermal Compound from Cooler Master. What we're going to do here with these CPUs is apply about a P dot size in the center of the IHS of the CPU. This is the way I would recommend doing this and it is more than enough thermal paste. Too little thermal paste is bad, a little bit extra is okay. Next up, you want to lower the cooler and line up the screws with the protruding holes from the back plate on your motherboard. For AM4 and AM5, this will be the same, but do make sure that they are aligned correctly. Now, the way I'd recommend doing this is diagonally from the top left, to the bottom right and then you can just tighten up the other two in whichever order you like when you're doing them up also make sure you don't over tighten with these screws it's quite hard to over tighten them you'll feel the screw hit a hard stop and when you hit that hard stop that's when you know you're tight enough locate the included fan what we're going to do then is locate the clips to hold the fans to the heat sink you want to clip on both of these on each side of the fan. They go through the fan holes on the front side, which means the open side of the fan facing forward. Then you want to align the fan with the heat sink itself. And then you want to clip the clips for the fans over the heat sink like so. 
and do it on both sides, otherwise the fan's just gonna fall off. Locate this cable here, this is the PWM fan connector. Both fan cables need to be plugged in. This one here makes the fan spin. You want to locate a header on your motherboard labeled something like CPU fan, and you wanna plug that into that header on your motherboard, and it only plugs in one way, so it's pretty difficult to mess that part up. Next, you'll want to locate the three pin five volt addressable RGB connector, and you want to then locate a three pin five volt addressable RGB header on your motherboard. Check your motherboard's manual for the correct header, and you wanna plug that cable in, and we're done. And that cable only plugs in one way, so it is very difficult to plug that in the wrong way. And if everything went to plan, your new Cooler Master Hyper 212 Halo Black should look a little something like this. I think I covered pretty much everything in this video and if you've got any questions, feel free to head on over to our Tech Help Discord. There's a link to that in the description down below or drop a comment down below. But make sure you read the comments because there's probably gonna be some really smart people who can answer all your questions down there already. Just take that into account because I just don't want you guys wasting your time if someone who knows exactly what they're doing maybe are able to answer your question really quickly or yeah just go to the tech help discord and someone will help you out if you like this video please like and subscribe and if you didn't like this video about this uh new cooler master cooler let us know what you didn't like about it once again thank you so very much for watching i me that's me i am your boy nick with gear seekers you pick we seeking I like the new design of this, and this is so much easier to install than it's ever been. Thanks for watching. Oh, that just hit me on the head. <laughs> That's <not true. laughs>